Good afternoon. My name is Ellen Sank Mars, and I'm here this afternoon to chat with our brand new senior pastor, Dan Comerford. As you may know, uh, Dan was born and raised in Minneapolis, in Minnesota, growing up near Minneapolis. He attended Bethel University in St. Paul, where he met his wife, Rachel. Now, Dan and, and Rachel have two children, Hannah and Micah, and they have just finished celebrating their 10th wedding anniversary. After earning his bachelor's degree, Dan felt called to pursue full-time ministry, which led him to obtain his Master's of Divinity at uh, Union Seminary in Richmond, Virginia. Dan comes to us from First Presbyterian Church of Tequesta, Florida, where he was senior minister. Welcome, Dan. Thank you. We are feeling so blessed to finally have you here, and we're more than ready to start this new chapter together at FPC Gastonia. So now that your family has been here for a few weeks, um, what have been your first impressions of Gastonia and the, and the community, and what activities have you enjoyed sharing together? Well, we were blessed to have the opportunity to move here about three or four weeks before I began here. And we wanted to experience what it was like to live here without having to work here. And I can tell you that our first impression is that uh, this area has so much beauty in it. From walking around the greenways or climbing Crowder's Mountain, um, and, and even seeing some of the, the restaurants and the food, uh, boy, y'all have delicious barbecue here. <laughs> you really do. And uh, so all of that, our first impression was this is a beautiful place with a lot going on. And, uh, and it's been such a joy for us uh, in those weeks before I started here, just living in the area and getting to know it. And, and now that we're serving the area, uh, it's been that much more of a blessing to be able to have spent time here. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, you preached your first, sun first sermon on Sunday. Now, I don't know about your nerves, but I can tell you that as a member of the PNC, uh, I felt like you were my own child standing up there, and, <laughs> and when you walked uh, in front uh, to, to begin your sermon, I, um, I couldn't have been praying more fervently for uh, a good outcome as if you had been my own. So, but of course I needn't have worried um, as I received several texts that uh, referenced things like, quote, you knocked it out of the park. <laughs> so um, it, it, uh, it certainly proved to be uh, no worry. Um, I especially liked how you interwove God's care and God's call and how, how our response to that uh, makes such a difference. Um, and I'll, I'll just add a little personal reflection. I, w one of the things that you also said was it's not necessarily, even though you may feel the call, it's not necessarily easy to, uh, to accept it or to, to, to use it. And uh, I don't know, I don't think people necessarily know, but you did not, um, you were not looking for a new position when we were doing our search. And you came recommended to us from um, a professor at Union. And so I was faced with calling you, literally calling you, cold calling you on the phone. Um, to indicate our interest in you after we had, of course, listened to some of your sermons and, and had, uh, had found out some more about you. And I, I was certainly nervous about that. That was certainly uh, outside my wheelhouse. And I can't imagine you know, how you felt uh, receiving a call out of the blue when you had not, not been thinking about that at all. And so uh, you know, I've been reflecting about my call, your call, and then of course Rachel's call. Um, she had a job. She had a job that she enjoyed. You know, it, it's her call too, uh, and she gave up, you know, all of her 
familiar things down there and, and picked up and, and came with you. So, um, you know, it's just, it's uh, something that I've been thinking about a lot, this, this business of call. So, which brings me to my second question as we're discussing your sermon. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your sermon preparation and how you do that and whether you use the lectionary and maybe talk a little bit about the lectionary for us? Sure. Um, the, the one word that I would boil all of my sermon preparation down to is prayer. And uh, for me, the sermon is the opportunity for the pastor to communicate to the congregation where, uh, where I feel God is leading us. Or, or what, does, what is God saying to us right now, and, and where is God leading us into the future? So uh, the, the sermon is really the culmination of everything that has been happening in, in the church up to that point. And so sometimes that means everything that has been happening that week or that month. Uh, sometimes you might have an action-packed day, and everything that has been happening in the congregation uh, up to that, that Sunday, it all leads up to this moment where we all gather and we all pray that God speaks to us through hearing God's word read, and so that's the scripture, and then hearing God's word proclaimed, and that is uh, the reflection that, that I give every week, and I take that role and that responsibility very seriously. And so I spend the entire week in prayer and also in study, and I'm, I'm listening for what is happening around us, not just here within the congregation, but what's happening in the world around us. And in everything, I try to help all of us look at what is happening in our lives and in our community and in the world through the lens of our faith, because I think that our faith is the foundation upon which our entire identity stands. And so uh, the sermon is this opportunity for, uh, for us to take a break from everything that's happening around us, focus on God's word, and then connect that to what is happening in our lives, both as individuals and as a community. So you're going to hear me always say as individuals and as a community, because I think it, it's all happening simultaneously. Um, at some point, uh, there was a group of scholars who came up with uh, a bunch of passages that lead up, uh, that, that connect to one another thematically. And every week, there is a selection of four different passages, two from the Old Testament, uh, two from the New Testament. Uh, one is a gospel passage, and then one is from another part of the New Testament. And that's what's called the lectionary. And the lectionary also follows the liturgical year. And so um, in Advent, the, the season of Advent, we will, uh, the lectionary has a lot of passages um, about Christ's birth and what was happening around there. And the Old Testament selections will show us uh, how, how some of those Old Testament uh, passages point us to Christ. Uh, and same with Lent. Uh, and in an, even in ordinary season, we we start to see different uh, passages that, that tie together thematically. And the lectionary is a wonderful tool, and I do use it, um, I, I do use it, but not like a lot of other pastors do. Some pastors will follow the lectionary um, and will choose a passage from that week. I, uh, I use that as an option, but the first thing that I always do is prayerfully discern what's happening in our lives, what's happening in the community. And from there, what piece of scripture is gonna help us connect all of that with our faith and our faith in Christ? So sometimes you might see me use a lectionary passage that is assigned to that particular week. Sometimes you might see me use a lectionary passage that uh, is used at a different time, uh, but, uh, but I'm using it at this time. Um, for instance, this week I'm going to be uh, preaching from a passage that we would normally hear in Advent, but I feel like it has something to say for us today. Sometimes you're going to hear me preach from passages that are not a part of the lectionary because the lectionary doesn't cover every corner of Scripture. 
Um, and so uh, I, what I love about the lectionary is that there is a lot of tradition and there's a lot of resources to, uh, to help craft a sermon and to do the academic work that's necessary every week. Um, and, and, uh, but I also love that there is freedom in, in what each pastor preaches. Um, so that, that's how I approach the sermon. And uh, it, it's just, it's so meaningful to me. And it is a blessing every week to be able to stand in front of uh, now First Presbyterian Church of Gastonia and ask that question together. Where's God in all of this? And where's God leading us? Wonderful. Um, of course, we know that serving as a senior minister slash head of staff is not just about preaching good sermons. <laughs> So, uh, but it does sound like you have a real passion for that, uh, which I think was evident Sunday. Um, are there some other things that you enjoy uh, about the ministry that, that stand out as, as you think about your ministry? I really enjoy being with people and, and having those types of conversations. So I think it's, uh, I, I've, I consider myself spoiled that I get to work with a great staff who have also devoted their lives to help this congregation connect their lives with God. And we get to talk about that all day, every week in different forms. And I love that. I love working with elders and deacons uh, and volunteers who are giving their time as well. Um, and, uh, and I also love having those conversations with people as, as they navigate really great times in life, but also really challenging times, because I think God has something to say in both of those instances and everywhere in between. So uh, I, I, so you'll see me, I love talking and chatting and, and asking those hard questions. And that is what I love. And it takes different forms every day. One thing I love about being a pastor is that no day is the same. You never know what you're going to walk into. <laughs> <laughs> when you come into the office in the morning. So sometimes that kind of conversation will happen uh, over a Bible study. Sometimes it will happen when you're uh, visiting someone in the hospital. Sometimes it's going to happen when you're planning for a reception after a worship service. But all of those are opportunities to bring God into our lives and to follow God in everything we do. And so that's why I love being a pastor, and I do think I take all of that, and it, it culminates in the sermon, but the sermon, I wouldn't be able to preach a sermon like that if I hadn't had all of those opportunities that helped shape and form uh, that time to get to the sermon. Well, we've talked today about the uh, gifts and skills that you bring to us, but um, as we begin to wrap up, uh, I feel like I need to ask you, what can we as a congregation do to help you and your family make this transition? Hmm. Uh, overall, please uh, continue to pray for us because I think that prayer is uh, that, that foundation in all of our relationships uh, that, um, that, that really help us and I think will help my family and I succeed here. Um, please reach out to us if you want to get to know us uh, don't wait for me to be able to come to you but come uh, drop drop me a line uh, send me an email uh, invite me over we would love to get to know everyone um, and I know that that will take time so uh, just uh, being proactive if, if you'd like to get to know us we'd like to get to know you um, and uh, I, I guess the, the last thing would be, uh, as we're praying and getting to know one another, uh, the best thing that I could ask for is um, patience and, uh, and, and a spirit of adventure and, and seeing what God has in store for us, because I think we're going to be able to explore possibilities that we may have never thought possible before. And so in that, um, that's going to take a uh, courage on all of our parts to make that step and that leap of faith. So in that, uh, as, as y'all get to know me and trust me 
and, and I get to know you and love you more than I do right now, um, that, uh, that that will bring us together and we will be able to go where God is leading us. And speaking of what you can do, if, by, if in watching this you've come up with any questions that you would like to ask Dan, uh, you can respond on the video or you can send uh, an email to communications at fpcgastonia.org and uh, we will uh, compile these and hopefully there will be an opportunity for uh, another video in the future. Thank you so much, Dan, for speaking with us today. We are, we are so excited to have you. And thank all of you for watching. And join us on Sunday morning uh, when we'll hear Dan preach about who's calling. <laughs>